morning, everybody. It's Bobby, and today I want to talk about a couple of comments that I received oh, about a video I did a couple of weeks ago. Apparently, I infuriated at least two viewers as they left some personally insulting, disparaging comments in the comment section. Uh, there's some guys out there on YouTube. I have no idea who they are. But uh, the video was one in which I was saying that when you're putting from long distances, don't worry so much about putting it in the hole, just get the distance right. You might get lucky and it might fall, but if you'll get the distance right, then your sins will be forgiven. And uh, one person wrote in all capital letters, you moron, I feel sorry for your students. Aim small, miss small. And what he's referencing, I'm pretty sure, is that movie with Mel Gibson called The Patriot, where he was talking to his young son before they were about to go into a revolutionary war battle. And he said, son, aim small, miss small. Meaning if you aim directly at the middle of his sternum, even if you're off a little bit, you'll still take that soldier out. And he's implying, I guess, therefore, that I should encourage my students to do the same thing, to try desperately to access specifically that four and a quarter inch diameter hole regardless of all the uneven terrain between you and it, just try to get as accurate as you can. And if you're off a little bit, you'll still be near the hole. And that sounds like a very cogent argument, doesn't it? Well, I'm going to poke a hole in it. And before I do, I want to tell you about another comment. Another guy called me a name and then said, oh, obviously you know nothing about putting. If you did, you'd know that what set Tiger Woods apart from all the other tour players is that when he was 70 and 80 feet away, he was trying to make it. He wasn't trying to get him close. And all the other tour players used to comment that that's what made him great, that he wasn't trying to get him close. He was trying to make them. His powers of focus were such that he could do that. And that's what set him apart. And so if I uh, you know, was worth my salt as an instructor, then I would have my students do the same as Tiger Woods. And I'll poke a hole in that one before long too. So, but before I do, let me ask you all a question. Whenever you made your last 50 or 60 footer, a long putt, how often did that ball actually travel on the line that you had set out in your mind? How often does it really follow specifically the exact line all the way from the time it hits your putter until it goes into the hole exactly as you had it laid out? I would say it deviates from that line far more often than it follows it closely. And in most cases, really, you just misjudge your, your read, but you also happen to mishit the shot. The two canceled one another and you made the thing. And so that's true. But one thing you did really well is you got the speed right. You hit the ball so that it was traveling by the hole and the hole happened to be there. It happened to be going at a speed that it would fall in. Really, a read is just a guess. And because it's a guess and because it can't be reduced to a perfect science, you just need to get something what you feel like is close. And from that point on, go ahead and start thinking about the distance. Now, I want you to imagine for just a moment, I want you to imagine that you are the best putter uh, at your club uh, in terms of the distance you're able to hit a putt. If you want to hit it 52 feet, you can hit it 52 feet. Nobody is better at stroking the ball the right distance than you are, but you are only so-so with respect to reading it right or, or hitting it on the line you want. Let's go see what 12 or 13 balls from 50 feet away would look like for you. As you can see, you got the speed right on all of these. And my goodness, look at that one on the far left-hand side. That's like four feet away. And the one on the far right-hand side, that was as bad as it got. All those others in the middle are pretty much gimmies. There is a chance that you might two-putt every single one of these. Why? Because while they're not all perfectly online, your sins are forgiven because you got the distance right. Now, let's think about player number two. This person is always dead on accurate, always reads it perfectly, always hits it on the line they want, but is only so-so in terms of distance control. Again, we're 50 feet away. Let's look more at how their balls would look. And as you can see, they hit them all in one straight line. That's pretty good. They were all going to that hole. Oh, wait, as we go out here to the side, we see that there's only a few in the middle that are actually uh, tap-ins. And where there's going to be some three putts, look how far away the longest one on the left is compared to the longest one on the right. This person is going to have some real trouble because they were not specific enough on getting the distance right. So I think there's one thing we can all agree on, and that is that there are two aspects to making a putt. One is distance and one is direction. And too often people are enamored by and intrigued by the latter. They're thinking more about the direction of their putt rather than the distance, and that costs them. Now, how do I know that? Because I'm always giving golf lessons. And I frequently will be giving a golf lesson, often to a good player, who from 60 feet away will say, Bobby, I see two inches to the right. What do you see? And I'll say, well, obviously it's two, it's straight putt. Just, uh, just try to get the distance right. Oh, uh, you're right. Maybe it's only one inch. Or do you think it's straight? Well, it's something like that. Just get the distance right. And then they'll go up there and they'll hit the thing 14 feet short of the hole. Leave it 14 feet short. Now, what happened? I think it's obvious what happened. You only got one processor. 
And if you're distracted by thinking about this, then you're not going to be thinking about that. This person is thinking so much about getting the break right that they forget to hit the ball. You know, your powers of focus are such that we're all limited. And what we're limited to being able to do is picking out a general line. And once we do that, leaving it alone and, and then investing all of our mental focus on trying to get the distance right. Now, often this person, after they leave that putt short, will say, ah, well, you know, I, I didn't quite hit it. But uh, I, I think I did read it right. I think it was about an inch out to the right. They're still focusing on, on their direction issue. Now, this person, if they ever hit it 14 feet wide, right or left, they would want to slit their wrist. But because that's just, you know, that's a distance problem. That's not up to me. You know, it's, it's like distance will be either done well or poorly as the golf gods will have it. And it's beyond me. And that's not the case. If you'll just focus on it, it will come to you a, a lot quicker. And one other thing I want to say about that is if you'll ever go putt at night, I, I challenge anybody to do this. Go putt on a moonlit night when there's a full moon. And you'll be astonished at how well you can lag putt, how close you can get from 40 and 50 and 60 feet. Why? Because you can only see the more prominent breaks. You can only see the more general breaks. You look at a hole and you see a little mound over here and you go, you know what? I'm going to shoot it two or three feet up that hill and I bet it'll, it'll go on down there by the hole. And it does because you're not distracted by being so precise because you can't see the precise breaks. You can only see the general contour that happens across the board. Anytime I've ever taken somebody to putt by the moonlight, they are astonished at how well they can do it, particularly on getting their long putts close to the hole. And I really think that most golfers would be best off if we just saw the greens like we see them at night. And that is worry more about the more prominent breaks and not try to take into account every little bump and hop that ball might take. Get the speed right. Now, in reference to those two questions I had, the guy who said, aim small, miss small, hey, that's a great idea when you're shooting a gun because there's only one aspect to shooting a gun and that's aim. You get the crosshairs on, on that subject and you fire. In golf and putting, you have to worry about aim and distance. And if you're thinking too much about aim, you're gonna lose your focus of distance and the whole thing is gonna be undermined. And so while that seems like a good argument, it's not the same in golf. Get a general line and then put all your worry on the distance you hit the ball and you might make the thing anyway. And the other person uh, who said something about Tiger, what sets him apart is his ability to focus. Yeah, well, the, the very supposition that you provided me in that, in that question or in that statement, I guess, it kind of proves my point. And that is if, if, only, if, the, if the tour players are all saying that only Tiger has that ability, that faculty, to, to think just as much about distance as direction to the point where he's trying to make them and none of the other tour players can. Do you suppose I should try to get my student to be like the, the, the one guy who can do it that way and, and when that's not a way that the others have found the going easier? I would say do it more like the other tour players and just get the distance right after picking a general line. And so you viewers who commented last week or 10 days ago, I welcome you to comment again. Uh, everyone's welcome in this tent. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you next week.